På bensinstasjonen i Beograd. 1970, juli 1970. Da stod jeg og tanket diesel. Så kom det en buss med løsarbeidere som var på tur. Det var en søndag. Og så begynner de å slåss med hverandre. Der var vi da to biler og to, fire sjåfører. Så da var jeg ferdig med å tanke. Da tar han sjåføren i handen, og da så kommer en, en kille bak fra meg. Og så drar han fram en sånn 7 cm spring, springkniv, som han dølker meg midt i ryggen med. Det er derfor jeg går og halter og bruker krøkker. I'm now heading for the bridge over the Bosporus. It starts in Europe and ends in Asia, for me at least. For others, it starts in Asia and ends in Europe. Once you cross that bridge, I mean, you were, you were on your way. You, you know, it, it was a different feeling. Men det var jo greit oppe i Europa, helt til vi kom på andre siden av Bosporus og forbi Ankara. Da begynte det å bli noen dårlige veier. Og du satt jo hele tiden og var, var redd for at bilen skulle rykke strønne sønder. Det var jo hele tiden bare passe på å ikke sitte og dubbe og sove. <laughs> I did have a map of the Middle East, but it was very, very basic. You know, there was only sort of few roads on there. We had to draw lines and, and you know, put indications like, like if I saw something that I, I could identify with, ah, you know, and I'd put the name of it on the line, like a tower or, or a burnt out car or something like that, which would never get moved. How they used to have accidents in desert roads like that, I never know, but it was a crazy place. Right now, I've got to reach Doha, and that's a nice little run of 2,000 miles, but at least I'll have a road all the way, thank God. big thing in those days was paperwork. You know, it was mind-boggling. Every time you went, it was different. You know, something had changed and because every country was different paperwork and, you know, like taxes for this, taxes for that. Everybody wanted money out of you and they wanted hard currency, like, you know, like dollars. Because we used to carry quite a bit of hard currency with us, you know, and people knew that we had to in different currencies, you know, and, and we were a target, really, you know, for being robbed and stuff like that. You had to be very, very vigilant, you know, and never leave anything anywhere. I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. What did you know? I didn't know about it. 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 But I think they were taken forward with the adventure. And I think once you've done it once and learned from that experience, you want to go further. What makes this trip different is that for part of the way, there's no road. 14 people are said to have simply vanished out there in less than a year. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not scared, but you have to admit it's quite a challenge. <laughs> 